Chapter 4 The US Capitol Building stands regally at the eastern end of the National Mall on a raised plateau that city designer Pierre Le Enfant described as a pedestal waiting for a monument. The Capitol's massive footprint measures more than 750 feet in length and 350 feet deep. The uh, housing more than 16 acres of floor space. It contains an astonishing 541 rooms. Wow, what the hell? Okay. The neoclassical architecture is, meticu is meticulously designed to echo the grandeur of ancient Rome, whose ideals were the inspiration for America's founders in establishing the laws and culture of the new republic. The new security checkpoint for tourists entering the Capitol building is located deep within the recently completed subterranean visitor center beneath the magnif magnificent glass skylight that frames the Capitol dome. Newly hired security guard Alfonso Nunez uh, carefully studied the male visitor now approaching his checkpoint. The man had a shaved head and had been lingering in the lobby completing a phone call before entering the building. His right arm was in a sling, and he moved with a slight limp. He was wearing a tattered armor oh he was wearing a tattered army navy surplus coat, which combined with his shaved head made Nunes guess military. Those who had served in the U.S. Armed Forces were among the most common visitors to Washington. Good evening, sir, Nunez says. Nunez said, following the security protocol of verbally engaging any male visitor who entered alone. Hello, the visitor said, glancing around at the near, nearly deserted entry. Well, uh, quiet night. NFC playoffs, Nunes replied. Everyone's watching the Redskins tonight. Nunes wished he was too, but this was his first month on the job and he'd drawn the short straw. Metal objects in the dish, please. As the visitor fumbled to empty the pockets of his long coat with his one working hand, Nunes watched him carefully. Human in instinct made special allowances for the injured and handicapped. But it was an instinct Nunez has been trained to override. Nunez watched while the visitor removed his removed from his pockets the usual assortment of loose change, keys, and a couple of cell phones. A couple of cell phones, what the hell? Sprain? Nunez asked, eyeing the man's injured hand, which appeared to be wrapped in a series of thick ace bandages. The bald man nodded. Slipped on the ice, I've a week ago. Still hurts like hell. Sorry to hear that. Walk through, please. The visitor walked through the elevator of the detector, and the machine buzzed in protest. The visitor frowned. Or frowned. I was afraid of that. I'm wearing a ring under these bandages. My finger was too swollen to get it off, so the doctors wrapped right over it. No problem, Nunez says. I'll just use the wand. Nunez ran the metal detection wand over the, the visitor's wrapped hand. As expected, the only metal he detected was a large lump on the man's injured ring finger. Nunez took his time rubbing the metal detector over every inch of the man's sling and finger. He knew his supervisor was probably monitoring him on the closed circuit in the building security center, and Nunez needed this job. Always better to be cautious. He carefully slid the wand up inside the man's sling. The visitor winced in pain. Sorry. It's okay, the man said. You can't be too careful these days. Ain't that the truth, Nunez liked this guy. Strangely, that counted for a lot around here. Human instinct was America's first line of defense against terrorism. It was a proven fact that human intuition was a more accurate detector of danger than all the electronic gear in the world, the gift of fear, as one of their security reference books termed it. In this case, Nunez's 
instincts sent nothing that caused him any fear. The only oddity that he noticed now that they were standing so close was that this tough looking guy appeared to have used some kind of self tanner or concealer makeup on his face. Whatever. Everyone hates to be pale in the winter. You're fine, Uni says, completing his sweep and stowing the wand. Thanks. The, the man started collecting his belongings from the tray. As he did, Nunez noticed that the two fingers protruding from his bandage each bore a tattoo. The tip of his index finger bore the image of a star, and the tip of his thumb bore that of a crown. Seems like everyone has tattoos these days, Nunez thought, although the pads of his fingertips seemed like a painful seemed like painful spots to get them. Those tats hurt? The man glanced down at his fingertips and chuckled. Less than you might think. Lucky, Uni says. Mine hurt a lot. I got a mermaid on my back when I was in boot camp. A mermaid? The mer the, the bold man chuckled. Yeah, he said, feeling sheepish. The mistakes were made. The mistakes we make in our youth. I hear you, the bold man said. I made a big mistake in my youth too. Now I wake up with her every morning. They both laughed as the man headed off. Child's play, Malik thought as he moved past Nunez and up the, es the escalator towards the Capitol building. The entry had been easier than anticipated. Malik slouched, Malik's slouched, slouching posture and pedaled up and padded belly had hidden his true physique, while the makeup on his face and hands had full had hidden the tattoos that covered his body. The true genius, however, was the sling, which disguised the potent object Malik was transporting into the building. A gift for the one man on earth who can help me obtain what I seek.